started bird watching not that long ago, let's say about 15 years ago, so quite late in life really, and started to volunteer for the Wildlife Trust in Salford on one of the um, one of the Mossland restoration projects, and then I moved to Manchester and, and picked up this work there, um, which I've been doing ever since sort of like last last March when we started, and this is the final site that we're going to be working on. Having said that, we've, we've just seen a dipper on this river by the side of me now, which is the River Irk. We also get kingfishers along here, um, a bit more elusive, a bit more difficult to see. You tend to catch them really when they're in flight. You sometimes see them perching on branches, obviously overlooking the water and, and um, waiting patiently for, for prey. Bird watching is an odd pastime and there are various people that are attracted to it for all sorts of different reasons. I mean, people have heard the name the word switcher, um, I, I, which is at the extreme ends of bird watching, I suppose. The other, the other end of the spectrum is the person that just casually watches birds from their own back window um, and, and, and watches birds in the garden, but both of which are, are equally valid, um, a valid pastime. Uh, I guess I'm somewhere in the middle. I'm, I'm, somewhere, some, I'm a person that likes to see birds and likes to see new species but it's not the be all and end all, it doesn't really matter. Um, what, what, what matters is, is, making, is making that connection. Um, I think it's really important for me, for, from, a, a, from someone that struggled with mental health issues, it just seems a really poignant, a poignant thing to do to make a connection with another, another species, another sentient being. Um, for that brief moment when you, when you capture a bird in your binoculars and you find it looking back at you. It's awesome. It's therapeutic in every sense, I think. I mean, it, it, it lifts your spirit. Um, it makes you feel better, both, both as a person, physically and mentally. And, it, and for me, you know, taking part in these work parties and, and, and being a part of a natural environment um, it is one of the most therapeutic things I've done in all the times that I've struggled with mental health issues. It's been probably the best intervention, a more therapeutic intervention perhaps than, than, than some that have been prescribed on the NHS. The thing about bird watching is you, you, you are constantly looking for new species, but like, as I said before, it, it's, 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 it's just as valid to see the stuff that's, that's common in your garden. I mean, in my garden, I'm very fortunate, I have, I have um, my bird feeders up and the bulk of the birds I attract are, are, are common house sparrows, uh, nothing really to write home about. But having said that, common house sparrows in the United Kingdom, the population of common house sparrows has, has, has declined by something like 80% since the 1970s. So although they, they, they appear to be abundant where I am, um, that they're only they're still locally common, but, but nationally the, the, the reduction in the numbers has been quite dramatic. We need, to be, we need to be the custodians of wildlife, we need to be the guardians of these places and make sure that they're still here for future generations, not just still here, but hopefully, hopefully expanded. So finding these little pockets of spaces and, and, then, and then doing something to, to help conserve them and, and keep them for future generations, I think is absolutely vital.